It's a sunny Saturday morning in Wallops Island, Virginia at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility, and you're looking at a live view of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport Pad 0A. What you see right now is the Antares rocket with the Cygnus spacecraft ready for launch in just under 30 minutes on Northrop Grumman's 12th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station. Cygnus will be delivering over four tons of cargo to the International Space Station, and after its launch today, it'll make a two-day journey, arriving Monday, November 4th. FGS external power nominal. Copy that. We'll check 356 and 357. I'm NASA's Leah Cheshire, and we're live from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where flight controllers are monitoring all systems aboard the space station. The space station is currently flying about 259 statute miles north of Bermuda in the Sargasso Sea. Flight Director Royce Renfrew is leading teams in this room today. You can see him there. He's gathering data from all the flight controllers ahead of Cygnus launch. The visiting vehicle officer this morning, or VVO, is Ray Bijaness. He's in direct communication with Northrop Grumman and is sharing Cygnus status with teams here in the room. FSO, arm on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Plus one, plus two, arm removed. Check channel continued. LC elect two, FTS arm indication received. FTS currently indicates safe. And FSO, verify FTS arm indication. FSO, FTS arm indication. LC elect two, FTS safe and arm, and FTLU safe. Copy all. We'll check uh, 362, 363, and 60, uh, 364 complete. There are multiple locations where the vehicle is being monitored today. This is the Northrop Grumman Mission Control Center located in Dulles, Virginia, where teams continue to monitor the Antares rocket and Cygnus spacecraft. Everything currently proceeding nominally for an on-time launch at 8.59 Central Time, 9.59 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. The mission director today in Dulles is Paul Brower. It's a special time uh, for the International Space Station. On October 31st, the three-member crew, uh, Expedition 1 crew of William Shepard, Yuri Gidzenko, and Sergei Krikalev arrived, uh, launched to the International Space Station. And on this day, 19 years ago, they arrived to the International Space Station, beginning 19 years of continuous human presence in space. During an on-time launch today, the International Space Station will be flying over the South Atlantic, southwest of Cape Town, South Africa, at an altitude of 257 statute miles. <coughs> but down here on the ground, and as you can see in this picture, mostly clear skies, actually totally clear skies, and a little over 40 degrees Fahrenheit, expecting nice and clear conditions throughout the rest of the morning. There is a 0% chance of any weather violations. Cygnus will arrive to the International Space Station after a two-day journey, and it will make its way to the Unity module on the Earth-facing side of the station Monday, November 4th. Astronauts aboard the station will use the Canada Arm 2 to reach out and grapple the spacecraft once it reaches its grapple point. Jessica Meir will be the capture lead for that morning, and she'll be backed up by Christina Cook. NASA astronaut Drew Morgan will monitor Cygnus systems during the final stage of the rendezvous. Once astronauts have captured the vehicle, they'll turn controls back over to teams here on the ground, where the robotics officer will use the Canada Arm 2 to reposition the spacecraft and bring it up toward the Unity module and berth it with the space station. Crew will access the cargo later that day. And Cygnus will remain attached until January 13th, 2020, when it will depart the space station but not return to Earth just yet. It will complete some satellite deployments and additional objectives before burning up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. 
prop two. Yeah, prop two step uh, 365, you're going to place OCCS in the SAC mode and pause the HSS ASC. In work. Under 24 minutes until launch this morning, let's take a look at what is on Cygnus. A total of over four tons, over 8,200 pounds, will be launching to the space station this morning. That's over 1,700 pounds of crew supplies, over 4,242 pounds of utilization equipment, which is uh, science experiments and other hardware, 203 pounds of spacewalk equipment, another 1,561 pounds of vehicle and system equipment, and 31 pounds of computer resources. And prop two, you can resume your HSS ASC and then return OCCS to automatic control mode. And LC prop two, HSS ASC resumed, OCCS in auto control mode. Copy that too. We'll check 368 and 369 and GNC one. Can you provide status of upper level winds? LC GNC one, upper level winds are go. Roger that, GNC-1, we'll check 370 complete. Ops-1 LC, countdown 1, step 371, enabled ME-1 and ME-2, TVC and EHA buses. LC Ops-1 and work. LC Ops-1, TVC and EHA buses enabled. Roger, Ops-1. Site control, step 372, arm tell for rapid retract. And in work. This morning, we are joined by Christina Holona, Program Manager for Antares Systems Engineering Integration and Test, here with us from Northrop Grumman today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here, and good morning to everyone who's joined us this morning. So can you tell us a little bit more about your role? Sure. Um, as the Antares Systems Engineering and Integration Test Engineer, um, program manager. My role is to provide systems engineering leadership to efficiently and uh, reliably execute Antares cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station. My team and I work to increase the focus on uh, clear requirements development, uh, interface design, testability, and verification. Um, the system engineering is an important role to Antares as we actually get to, you know, interface with all the different engineering disciplines through um, across the program. And uh, we do this to ensure that we are always in compliance with our customers' requirements and their needs throughout the program. That's great. So there are some differences uh, with this launch that we have, we saw this before on Northrop Grumman 11, um, but we're seeing it again on Northrop Grumman 12, uh, the late load option for, for cargo on Cygnus. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. One of the uh, unique features of the Antares 230 Plus vehicle is that we have built new specialized ground support equipment that allows us to take the vehicle from vertical um, to horizontal. This allows us to kind of drive what we call a mobile clean room right up to the pad, as you see that there in, in the graphic. And uh, this allows us to um, uh, 
we move the pop top fairing. Um, we can't see it there in the picture, but there's actually a little pop top on top of the fairing that comes off. And we're able to load time sensitive research experiments and other perishable items that NASA needs to provide 24 hours prior to launch. Um, I'd also like to do note a key flexibility feature added to the CRS-2, uh, which is the ability for NASA to significantly alter the final cargo load by up to 20% as late as the 24 hour, hours before liftoff. And uh, we, you can't see it here too, but there's a bladder that inflates between the um, between that little opening there and the fairing. And that inflates to uh, close the gap between the clean room and wall so that everything that goes in and out is protected. It's very interesting, and I understand this is not the only difference for this flight. Uh, this is the first flight of the Antares 230-plus rocket. So what are some of the differences between 230, which we've seen fly before, and 230-plus? Oh, uh, sure. So the NG-12 is the first flight of the Antares 230-plus configuration. And the difference from Antares 230 are the upgrades to the Stage 1 core. Um, it's also a lighter composite structures and an optimized second stage mortar. Uh, the upgraded Stage 1 core allows Antares engines to perform at full thrust throughout most of the first stage profile. Uh, with these upgrades, we're, uh, we're able to offer NASA more cargo capability for their CRS-2 missions by increasing the performance of Antares. We're also providing more flexibility for the final cargo load as well. And, and this figure you can, everyone can see is the, the differences, and you can see um, in comparison how much we've kind of taken off, and there's definitely lots of mass savings for us for 230+. plus. Great, more efficient and uh, able to deliver more cargo, so that's what everyone wants. Oh yes, yes, and that will, uh, we'll be doing that for 230 plus going forward. Thank you so much, Christina. We are now just over 17 minutes from launch of Cygnus. We'll be looking for that at 8.59 a.m. Central and 47 seconds, 9.59 a.m. Eastern and 47 seconds. But uh, the teams have been progressing smoothly throughout the morning through some pre-launch milestones. That began about four hours ago with pull for readiness for the launch vehicle to be powered on. And then an hour and 20 minutes before launch, fueling began of the first stage. That's liquid oxygen and R21 kerosene. Roger that. System will check 379 complete. There have been various checks throughout the morning uh, between Houston and Dulles, Virginia to ensure everything is on schedule. And at the 12 minute mark before launch, we will have a poll to proceed with the final countdown. Everything continues to proceed smoothly and at five minutes before launch, the vehicle will switch to internal power. Lead on countdown one. Go ahead, lead. F1N level is 13 of 13. Roger that. Lead Core 1LC, countdown 1. About three minutes and 30 seconds before launch, auto sequence handoff uh, for terminal, terminal countdown will be initiated, and that marks the time the computers take over for the final steps up through the launch at T minus zero. Uh, launch team be advised, step 3D5 will be not required for today's operation. We'll be coming up with our uh, poll to proceed with final countdown in just about three minutes. And uh, core one LC, countdown one. All Cygnus vehicles are named after people who have made significant contributions to spaceflight but have passed away. And this vehicle is named after the late Apollo and Skylab astronaut who died on May 26, 2018 at the age of 86. That's Alan Bean. It's very appropriate that Cygnus is named after Bean on this mission. It launches 50 years to the month after uh, Alan Bean, Pete Conrad, and Dick Gordon flew to the moon on the Apollo 12 mission, in which Bean became the fourth human to walk on the lunar surface. He was the lunar module pilot aboard Intrepid with Mission Commander Conrad when they landed on the moon at the Ocean of Storms on November 19, 1969. Four years later, he commanded the second crewed Skylab mission, Skylab 3, which launched on July, July 28, 1973. Bean, Owen Garriott, and Jack Luzma spent 59 days in space aboard America's first space station. 
That's Alan Bean, and we will see the Cygnus named after him flying very shortly today. Roger that, prop two. We'll check step 382 complete. CMDLC, countdown one. And CMDLC, countdown one. CMD, countdown one, go ahead. Yeah, CMD, looking for status on your internal power? Yes, uh, Cygnus is on internal power and nominal. Roger that, we'll check 384 complete. And launch TMLC on countdown one. At this time, we're on a poll to proceed with final countdown. GSO? GSO, go. RSO? RSO is go. TD? TD is go. Prop lead? Prop lead is go. Stage one? Stage one is go. MES one? MES one is go. GC? GC, go. ACE? ACE is go. Mars? Mars is go. CMD? CMD is go. LD? LD is go. NG. In honor of Alan Bean, who shared the gift of exploration in both life and art, and inspired future generations to travel back to the moon and beyond, Northrop Grumman is go. Copy, and we are go to proceed with final countdown, check step 386. And Ops 2, LC, countdown 1, step 387. Go to start engine evacuation. Engine evacuation started. You just heard the poll to proceed with the final countdown, and we're also watching some ducting happening off the rocket. We can't really see the Antares logo so well anymore. So, Christina, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening there? Sure, you can you can see the top half of the first stage of the vehicle is really cold uh, with that cryogenic liquid oxygen. The Antares logo is almost completely, completely obscured by ice, as you can see there. Uh, the evaporative process is happening, so the liquid oxygen is blowing off of its relief valves. Just under 10 minutes until launch of Antares. Things continuing to proceed smoothly throughout the countdown this morning. Once we get to the launch, the first thing that will occur is the stage one ignition. You'll see liftoff just a few uh, short seconds afterward, and those main two engines will burn for about three minutes and 18 seconds before cutting off, and stage one will separate from the rest of Antares. Cygnus will coast for a bit until fairing separation when the external cover that protects the spacecraft during launch will separate. 
The interstage adapter that connects the first and second stages will separate at 3 minutes and 58 seconds into flight before stage 2 ignition, a solid rocket fuel that will burn for 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Once the second stage burns out, we'll be listening for the call of orbit insertion for the rocket at 6 minutes and 49 seconds after launch. The vehicle will coast for two minutes before Cygnus separation, eight minutes and 49 seconds after liftoff, with solar array deploy occurring about two hours and 53 minutes after launch. The deployment of those two Ultraflex solar arrays currently tucked away on Cygnus takes about 30 minutes, and then the vehicle will begin gathering power for the next couple of days during its journey to the space station. We haven't showed the wall. LC, site control, assay, ECS, transfer to GN2 confirmed. Five minutes and 45 seconds until the launch, and the next, uh, the next milestone for Antares will be for the vehicle to begin uh, turning on to internal power at five minutes. Launch team step 389 will be not required for today's operation. And ops two, you go to initiate engine priming at T minus five minutes. Engine priming started. Ops one, you go for step 398, transfer avionics to internal power. All internal power on selected. Standing by for command completion. All external power off. And now CLX-1 confirms internal power is nominal. Ops-1, step 400, open FTS Umbi loop and verify green indication. FTS Umbi loop open and green. 
LC Elect 2, FTLU, and FTS receiver indications are nominal. Ops 1, step 402, send all arm command. LC Ops 1, all arm command sent. LC Elect 1 confirms SNAs and ODMs all armed. NASA TD, report range status. LC TD, range is green. Copy, range green. LCMES 1, step 405, priming verified. Copy, priming verified, check 405 complete. Three minutes and 30 seconds until launch. Everything continuing to proceed nominally for Antares. Phase, uh, phase three dynamic limits will be active at T minus three minutes. FC command into flight mode. Auto sequence start. ODM bus voltages and currents nominal. Copy all LEC 1. GNC 1, step 411, verify ready for nav mode. LC GNC 1, ready for nav. And OPS 2, step 412, switch to nav. LC OPS 2, switch to na navigate. LC, GNC-1, orb nav telemetry verified. Copy that, GNC-1, check step 413 complete. And we'll be at T-minus two minutes. One minute and 45 seconds until launch. Everything proceeding smoothly for Antares and Cygnus. Still looking at an on-time launch at the opening of a five-minute window. Aiming for launch at 8.59 a.m. Central, 9.59 a.m. Eastern. One minute, 30 seconds. Minus one minute. Mark. Range is green, weather is good. Forty seconds until launch. Minus 30 seconds. Mark. Twenty seconds until lift off. T minus ten. Five, four, three. Two, one. Performance nominal.
your performance nominal. Estimated alpha, one degree. BN03 is open. Engines remain at 100% and steady. Beginning of load release. Power is nominal. Estimated alpha one degree. Engines remain at 100% and steady. Power is nominal. Load release, phasing out. The NG3 is open. Roughly 100 cent seconds to Miko. Everything proceeding smoothly, about 100 seconds till main engine cutoff. Uh, just passing 100,000 feet. 100 feet per second squared. High altitude pitch up at five degrees. Enabling velocity steering. Engines remain stable. One minute to Miko. Engines remain at 100%. Attitude is nominal. BN04 and BN05 activated. Power nominal. Just passing 200,000 feet. Slow throttle down to 80% initiated. Main engine cutoff coming up in about 15 seconds. Engines 55%. Engines remain nominal. Main engine cutoff, nominal. PSS disabled. Stage one separation. ACS enabled. Attitude nominal. You can see in this graphic, sickness is separated from the stage one, and in the next few minutes, seconds, we'll be looking for the fairing separation. That's the shroud that covers and protects Cygnus during its launch. Stage one ignition time projected at T plus 245. Fairing separation. Interstage separation. Stage two ignition. Stage two is that solid rocket fuel that will burn for about two minutes and 43 seconds. Attitude nominal. Everything proceeding smoothly for Cygnus. Avionics power is nominal. Reaching 135 kilometers. Attitude nominal. Stage two TVC is nominal. Power subsystems remain nominal. Altitude uh, has just reached 150 uh, kilometers. Stage two, continuing to propel Cygnus now at 1,100 miles per hour. Power and TVC systems remain nominal. Attitude nominal. We are nearing one minute to stage two burnout. T 
CVC is nominal. Attitude nominal. Altitude 180 kilometers. Power subsystem nominal. Stage two burnout coming up in about 30 seconds. Cygnus velocity currently over 15,000 miles per hour. Attitude remains nominal. Altitude reaching uh, 190 kilometers. Stage two burnout. FTS disabled. Attitude nominal. Stage two burnout confirmed. Cygnus moving at over 16,833 miles per hour. Active. The next milestone will be Cygnus separation at about eight minutes and 49 seconds after launch. Power is nominal. And Terry's will coast for roughly another minute prior to payload separation. Systems continue to perform nominal. Altitude, 190 kilometers. Apogee and perigee within one sigma. Roughly 30 seconds to space craft separation. Power is nominal. Spacecraft separation. Team celebrating the confirmation of the spacecraft separation. Cygnus is now flying on its own. Yeah, maneuver initiated. Uh, LC, uh, that will end our callouts here for the NG-12 mission for Antares. Excellent job, Ace. Excellent job. Uh, good, uh, good launch all the way around. Let's go ahead and continue with our post-launch uh, checklist on countdown one. And uh, prop one, uh, step uh, 423, can you give me status on pulse purging? Uh, Alice, this is Prop 1. Pulse purging is complete. Okay, copy that. And uh, site control, step 424, remove AFP AGN2 flow and reconfigure ECS for post launch. Copy that and work. Copy and work. Uh, core 1, LC, countdown 1. LC, Core 1 on countdown 1. Yeah, Core 1, you can direct Ejnoi to power off their MS uh, ground equipment and report when complete. Uh, same with their FMS as well. Copy that, LC. Uh, they have to wait till they get access to the island to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, but I, I will let them know they are allowed to proceed once they gain access. Roger that. And uh, Ops 1, Step 427, you can deactivate Arm Enable and verify. LC Ops 1, Arm Enable rotated, Arm Enable indication no longer illuminated, and I can give you 248, or sorry, 428, Ops 1, Launch Enable removed. Copy that. And uh, GSO, uh, disable your local Launch Enable button. Launch enable button off. Copy that, uh, GSO. We'll check 429. LC, this is site control. Step 424 is complete. 
Roger that. Uh, say control 424 is complete. And uh, Ops 2, if you can record your ground mock uh, volts and currents. Ground mock, uh, external power on and green, and uh, power supply voltage is 27.96, power supply current 0 0.6. Copy all there, uh, Ops 2, and you, can you uh, remove ground mock power? Ground mock external power off. Roger that, uh, Ops 2. Uh, TLM 432, report when telemetry lock has uh, been lost at the DECOM for the uh, avionics motor cone. With safe. that successful confirmation of orbital insertion, Cygnus is now on its way to the International Space Station, where it will arrive in two days on November 4th. Right now, we're here with Christina Halona, the Program Manager for Antares Systems Engineering Integration and Test. So, Christina, what's going on now on the ground, and what will the teams uh, be doing until Cygnus arrives on Monday? So the uh, Cygnus ground team will be monitoring the spacecraft as well as performing a series of orbit maneuver burns to arrive at the International Space Station at a certain given time. Uh, the NASA ground team will be preparing the uh, space station for the Cygnus capture, arrival, and installation. And we're looking forward to that arrival early, early Monday morning. Uh, but Looking forward to Cygnus' departure, it will leave the space station in January 2020, but it's scheduled to complete an extended mission. So what will it be doing during that time? Post-departure from the space station, the Cygnus vehicle uh, performs a series of various uh, secondary operations. Uh, we're going to be launching some small satellites or CubeSats as well as performing maneuvers to test vehicle functions. Eventually the vehicle will perform a destructive entry over the Severn Pacific Ocean and also be carrying out all of the uh, trash from the space station as well um, and burning up on that re-entry. It's a very advanced uh, way to dispose of trash. It certainly is. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Christina. In just a few moments, we'll be speaking with Kenny Todd, the ISS Manager for Operations and Integration. This is a view of the Northrop Grumman Mission Control Center in Dulles, where Mission Director Paul Brower is overseeing all of the teams who are monitoring the systems aboard Cygnus, and they'll be keeping a close eye on the vehicle over the next couple of days while it makes its journey to the space station. Step 442, I have all four values nominal in green. Uh, 443, the pad J-box pressure is off in red. Tower J-box pressure is on in green. And I'm selecting off for the ground power J-box. Okay, copy all there, uh, Ops 1. Thanks for those readbacks. And uh, Ops 1, Ops 2, you can proceed with the uh, VIC client safing and power down. And Ops 2, if I can get you to extract the UPS logs for the LEV. A recap of everything that happened this morning. We saw uh, an on-time launch of Cygnus at 8.59 a.m. Central Time, 9.59 a.m. Eastern, towards the International Space Station. Cygnus lifted off from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Wallops Island, Virginia, and the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport Pad 0A. Cygnus is carrying with it over four tons of cargo to the International Space Station, including the last hardware needed for the upcoming Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer spacewalks uh, planned for later this month. Cygnus will arrive at the space station in two days. That'll be Monday, November 4th, and we'll be live at 1.45 a.m. Central Time for the capture of the vehicle by NASA astronauts Christina Cook and Jessica Meir aboard the International Space Station. 48, 449, and 450, uh, termination of pulse purging, verifying all sequencer activities are complete, and transitioning OCCS to manual mode. Uh, and verifying on both servers. What can you what can you give me on those steps? Copy that. Stand by.
and uh, GSO, I'll wait for your call. It was a smooth timeline and ascent for Cygnus this morning after an 8 minute and 49 second ride into orbit. Cygnus is now on its way to the International Space Station. Next milestone will be the unfolding of the Ultraflex solar arrays, which will help power the craft as it makes its journey to the orbiting laboratory. LC, this is Prop Lead on Countdown 1. Yeah, go ahead, Prop Lead. Yeah, pulse purging with FGSC has been terminated. All sequencer activities are complete. We are in auto, uh, sorry, we are in manual mode, and all auto sequence controls are paused. All right, I copy that, uh, Prop Lead. Thanks for the heads up there. And uh, GSO LC on uh, Countdown 1. Yes, sir. Yeah, let me know when uh, launch site is cleared for reentry. Copy. Uh, currently, fire department is there, and red team is en route. Okay, Roger that. Um, and is uh, I, I assume then uh, red team will be waiting for permission from the fire department to uh, reenter. Uh, fire department has already checked. No gross hazards. Red team has permission to enter the pad. All right, very good. I'm going to go ahead and close 447 then. Okay, launch team LC on uh, countdown one. Uh, we've completed our uh, post-launch uh, checklist, and at this time I'm going to go ahead and uh, release all stations. Great job, Antares, and congratulations, Cygnus. And uh, uh, Wallops Range, great job today. And Mars, thanks so much for the support. Couldn't have done it without you. LC out. Stations released. LC, LC PM, uh, are you going to need any support from the range?
We are joined now by International Space Station Manager for Operations and Integration, Kenny Todd. It looked like a nominal launch today, and Cygnus is on its way to the space station. So how's the program feeling? Well, right now, uh, it's been a very busy 24 hours. Uh, yesterday, we uh, we uh, uh, released the, the HTV, the Japanese-built HTV, after it stayed with us for 30 days. And then we get up this morning and, and to a picture-perfect uh, launch of, uh, of the Antares rocket with the Cygnus. So we're, we're excited. Um, the pace just picks up from here, but uh, we're excited and ready to go. And this launch is also carrying the remainder of the tools that will be used during the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer spacewalks for later this month. So uh, can you talk maybe about what are some of the things that are, that are going on board or maybe those spacewalks? Of course, uh, sure. Um, we've uh, been working for the last several years to put together a, a, a plan to go out and repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Uh, and that's led us to, uh, quite frankly, some, some ways of, of thinking about uh, approaching these EVAs that we hadn't ever considered before when it comes to our tools and the way we, we access the work site. And so it's going to be a, a challenging uh, a set of spacewalks right now. We're thinking it's like four spacewalks, possibly five, but, but uh, we're leaning forward, have a plan for four. Uh, the... Uh, the actual uh, tools that we're going to use are going to be very unique in nature just because of some of the things we have to do with, uh, to get access into the areas that, uh, that we need to, uh, to put this new pump package that, uh, that's been built by the, uh, the AMS consortium. So uh, we're excited to, to get on board with these new tools. Uh, we think that uh, um, you know, we have a, a really, really high probability of success uh, based on all the work that's been done here on the ground and uh, um, with, the, with the team that's put together these tools. So again, a lot of work that's went into it, and we uh, we feel pretty good about about this what I'll call a unique set of tools. So you mentioned four spacewalks coming up in this next month, month and a half, maybe. Uh, what does the pace look like for those? Well, we, uh, you know, we, we, we've got a, a blend of a lot of science coming on board right now. Um, you know, the Cygnus itself has a little over 8,000 pounds of cargo, uh, and over half of that, about 45, 4,600 pounds, is dedicated to science on the International Space Station. And so um, while we're, we're focused here in the near term on trying to get things ready to go do these AMS EVAs, we've also got a lot of science that, that's coming on board. A lot of this is, is time-critical, time-phased science, and so we're going to be putting together um, an integrated plan that allows us to conduct these EVAs, but at the same time do some some uh, some high value, high target research. Uh, probably we have some rodent research that, that's on, on, coming on board. We also have some biology experiments that are coming on board. Again, all that that uh, have specific start and stop times uh, in order to achieve the achieve, achieve the science objective. So uh, we'll uh, over the next uh, four to five weeks try to knock out uh, as many of these AMS EVAs as we can get. Again, not uh, not wanting to compromise. Uh, the other science objectives that we've we've uh, we've got on board with the Cygnus, but uh, uh, once we uh, once we get through uh, these AMS EVAs, we'll be uh, right on the on the uh, doorstep of, of SpaceX, uh, the next SpaceX flight that that'll be coming our way, and so in early December. So anyway, we're uh, we're going to be uh, going at a pretty good clip here over the next few weeks. Uh, we'll spend a lot of time in suits and checking out suits, uh, but in parallel with that, we're going to be trying to do a, a whole lot of, uh, as I said, high value, high target research. Uh, some of it aimed, quite frankly, at, uh, at helping us check out some of the technologies and things that we're going to need when we go to Moon and Mars. So it's, uh, it's a pretty exciting time. Absolutely. A very busy time for the International Space Station. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Kenny. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.
The next milestone for Cygnus will be Solar Array Deploy, and you can monitor our blog and social media sites for more information once that has occurred this morning. After that milestone, Cygnus will continue its journey to the space station and will arrive on Monday, November 4th, 2019. It will be birthed to the Earth-facing side of the Unity module when Jessica Meir and Christina Cook capture the vehicle with the Canada Arm 2. Crew will access the cargo on the same day. Our capture coverage will be live on air at 1.45 a.m. Central Time, 2.45 a.m. Eastern Time that morning, November 4th, and birthing coverage of Cygnus to the station's Unity module will go live at 5.30 a.m. Central, 6.30 a.m. Eastern. We hope you'll join us for that. Also on Monday, we'll broadcast live from Launch Complex 32 at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico as Boeing prepares to put the launch abort system of its CST-100 Starliner to the test. Coverage is scheduled to begin just before the 8 a.m. Central, uh, which is 7 o'clock Mountain Time. It's a 90-second test designed to demonstrate Starliner's ability to quickly escape the launch pad in the event of a launch day emergency. It'll be Boeing's first flight test as part of NASA's commercial crew program and help evaluate the performance of the abort system prior to missions to the International Space Station with a crew on board. NASA and the commercial partners, Boeing and SpaceX, are working toward returning the capability to launch American astronauts to the International Space Station and low Earth orbit on American-built spacecraft from American soil. But for now, a successful Saturday launch of Cygnus on time at 8.59 a.m. Central, 9.59 a.m. Eastern, now on its way to the space station. We'll be live on air again at 1.45 a.m. Central Monday for rendezvous and capture, and at 5.30 a.m. Central for berthing of Cygnus to the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us for the arrival. And until then, that wraps up our coverage for today. This is Mission Control Houston. Thank you.